Hey again, everybody. I hope y'all read that disclaimer. I kind of need y'all to read that. Y'all might feel a certain type of way after watching this video if you don't. But I'm glad you're here. Glad you found me. So let's get straight into the video. So I want you to see my client. This is about three months after her install. And she does have subarachnoid dermatitis and psoriasis. So if you guys don't really know what that is, it's a chronic autoimmune disease that causes skin cells to build up really quickly. Um, and really on any part of the skin. It's not an infection. You cannot catch it. It's linked to auto, your auto, I'm sorry, your immune system and genetics. Now the symptoms, they vary from person to person. You can have itching, bleeding, um, raised patches of skin, just uh, pus in some situations. So um, that's what you're going to see a little bit of everything. So now with this client here, she's got a lot of raised skin cells up underneath there. She's had her extensions in for about 10 weeks. We've got about an inch and a half of new growth. You see right here, this is a really overactive area. That part right there was giving her some trouble. Um, her scalp is actually pretty clean. It's a little frosted from, from her issue and it's a little dusty in there. But for the most part, you've got those raised areas, but her scalp isn't as bad as, um, you know, some other scalps have been definitely not as bad as it was when she first started coming to me. She actually had her skin had turned into a different kind of type of skin. It was a lot rough, bumpy, and she had severe hair loss in some areas that had the more overactive um, raised skin cells so when we removed all of those it, it it took a while but it regenerated and now she's got a full head of hair everywhere so we're going to start by unraveling the braids taking them down and this part if you guys remember in another video i love to pick stuff so i am a picker and um i i, I personally i enjoy when my clients come to me with scalp issues i love to help them and i love to assist the dermatologist in treating what issue it is and while I'm on that point I want to talk a little bit about cosmetology and dermatology cosmetology is the practice of studying cosmetics in our profession we are allowed to use items that will change the appearance of your skin or scalp or hair with our license we can't treat your scalp we can't diagnose it and offer you a treatment for it that's what a dermatologist does so I can carry out a dermatologist treatment um, but I can't treat it so when I say I'm treating my client I'm actually using what the dermatologist offered to them and I'm just following the process there are not a lot of dermatologists that actually do hair I know there are some look how thick those are and you can tell her scalp was stressed out and this is like a really overactive area. If you were to run your fingers over it, it would be really bumpy and, and dry and um, and raised. Like it wouldn't be a smooth ball. You would have all these 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 eruptions going on. And you got I got to remove that. You'll see in another clip where the hair actually, since it's like a thin liquid, sometimes when it pusses, it, it coats the scalp when I say it was like frosted, but the hair follicles are still able to grow in through that, some of them. So it completely encapsulates your, um, your, your freely growing hair out of your, out of your scalp. So I'm going to take the wide tooth comb and just free up some of the debris. Now, when you're, when you have your extensions in normal hair loss is 75 to 150 strands a day. That's everybody that's across the globe. That's normal. When you have your hair put up, your hair is still shedding 75 to 150 strands a day. Now, if you can see, she does not have a lot of hair loss at all. This is coming straight out. We didn't do any tick tricks straight out. Um, we don't have, I, I can't imagine, I can't stress it enough. It's not a lot of hair loss. So now we have the wide tooth comb and I'm going to go in and detangle. So we do have two areas in the back that still have that the patches of skin that I said were that had completely changed in texture. And you'll see that again in the minute. No, you know what? I think you'll see that on the this is a part two video. So this is the first part, just the removal. And then I have another part two that's actually going to show her hair getting rebraided and re-sewed in. And that's going to be next. But that's not on this video. 
but uh, you, you can see like those areas in the back that, that have actually changed texture. So she's got a full head of hair, you guys, like full head of thick, extremely healthy hair. And this was not the case when she first started coming to me. Many people are going to say, you know, we're taught in school to not scratch up dandruff and we're not scratching up the, the flakes. But in reality, if you have a client that's coming to you to get her hair styled and you're not cleaning her hair and her scalp, you're doing her a disservice. The people previous to me were shampooing her hair if they wanted to touch her at all. And then they weren't even cleaning her scalp. It was still big eruptions on her scalp. Her scalp was literally covered when she came to me. I really took my time with her and the reward was much greater than the sacrifice. We were both happy at the end of the day and I got a new client for life. Most of her big flakes have dislodged, you know, they're just trapped in her hair. They're not going anywhere until, you know, I needed to take it down to shampoo like these pieces. But I do you want to I do want to show you this chunk and you can kind of see how the hair grows through the scalp secretions. So you can see the holes here where the hair was coming through. And this is a pretty good, nice size flake. You know what I'm saying? Can you imagine standing behind her in a line and that just sitting on her shoulder? Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> so uh, getting back to the medicine. Now cosmetics, if you can walk up in a store and pick it up yourself as a consumer, that's a cosmetic. If you have to go behind the counter and ask for uh, permission or have a prescription, that's medicine. So the dermatologist deals with the medicine, cosmetologist deals with cosmetics. So a lot of people are saying, I would do this and I would do that, I would do this, I would do that. Well, under your license, you really can't do any of that. So you need to try to take a step back and look at the laws. So this is her scalp now. This is a little, um, this is from me just combing through it. You see some red patches and that's not irritated. I haven't scratched her scalp, her flakes up yet at all. That's just what's going on. So we're putting our Kirk Products Scalp Cleanse on here. And this is gonna soften up that, that tight skin and it's also gonna loosen up some of those, um, the scales. So I spray this evenly and I completely saturate her scalp. We give her um, a nice light scalp massage while I'm just working it in and making sure it's getting in there and, and beginning to soften everything. So when it's thoroughly applied and all of her scalp has been covered, there's no really need, there's no real need to put it on her hair. Then we just place her under a heated dryer with the plastic cap on. And the cap is going to generate some steam. And that'll pre-soften and get, get the, the first steps of the softening process going. So now she's out. We left her under there for about 10 minutes. And remember, the dryer was already heated, so she didn't go into it cold. And now I'm just running my fingers through it, trying to figure out where her elevations are. And I go back, and that's when I start scratching. Now, the, the steaming and the, the pre-cleanse oh, softens it up tremendously. And even though she has some overactive areas, I still scratch her entire scalp up. And it's not um, a sharp comb at all. It's, it's, and it's not a hard digging process. You're going to see them it, it, when you get ready. As soon as you scratch one piece, you're going to see how much of it is actually there. And this area right here, like I said, it was her, her active area. So I did spend quite some time over here and she had a really big eruption. So we did that all the way around. And as you can see with my hand movements, I'm, I'm as gentle as I possibly can be. Now we come to shampoo. So with shampoo, we're going to use a clarifying shampoo. Then we go in with a dandruff shampoo and then we do a conditioner. So those are her steps. The doctor does prescribe her a shampoo and she hates it. When we use that shampoo, the texture of her hair changes and we didn't see any results from it anyway. So we stopped using it, but we did continue to use the spray that he has us use um, once we clean her hair and this is the spray and we love it so please tune in to the next video if you want to see the other process and thank you so much for for watching mm -hmm.